singing out of the red book today for our hymn sing and our first song is 365 365 And the next number is 570, Jesus' Hands. <clears throat> Have one more, number five eighty five.
Welcome to St. Paul's United Church here in Tisdale, Saskatchewan. We're glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Let us join together by passing the peace. Peace be with you. And also with you. Are there any celebrations or uh, birthdays or anniversaries? No? Okay. If you turn to the announcements on the orange sheet, there are some of the announcements. I'm going to read some of them for the, our people who are watching us online. So this, the sign-up sign sheet for the Poinsettia Memorial is in the foyer on the table beside the minister's office. If, you would, if there's a memory, memorial that you would like to make. Today there's the baptism of Gage Weber, child of Dylan and Kim Weber. And I see Susan, good to see you. Decorating the sanctuary will follow. So if you can stay after uh, the service and we can do a little bit of decorating. Next week we'll be doing hanging of the greens, but it's kind of to get some of the help with some of the uh, decorating. On Thursday, November 24th, the women's gathering will be at 5.30 and there was a potluck supper followed by wreath making. So if you have a wreath that you can use, I think Cindy said she had a few extras and maybe there's some others who have extras and so we can, there's some items downstairs that we can use for decorating the wreaths and I have some at home, so please. Lots of embellishments to go on the wreath. Yeah, Cindy says we need lots of embellishments to go on the wreath. So you can either take the wreath home, if you like it really well, or you can leave it, and we have a room downstairs that will be the Christmas room for the, um, our tea and bake sale. So we can sell it if it's a very nice one. Anyway, that's something for on November 24th. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent, Sunday of Hope and we'll be having potluck lunch following this service. Monday, November 28th, is cookie dough making, beginning at 9 a.m. If you'd like to help, please add your name to the sign-up sheet that Cindy has put out on the counter. And if you can't help but would like to donate cash for the purchase of eggs or things that we need, you can do so too. The Usually there is Lenten lunches. Well, this, uh, this uh, time the ministerial has decided they want to have Advent lunch. So the first Advent lunch will be on Wednesday, November 30th. Soup and sandwiches at the Golden Age Center at 12 noon. Saturday, December 3rd. This is a very, very busy time. I just like looking at it hey and we've got a t christmas tea and bake sale so there's a sign up sheet on the counter for that if you're able to help there's posters in the on the bulletin board so if you want to ask see more about that please do then december uh 4th sunday is uh second sunday in advent it's peace sunday and White Gift Sunday. Uh, so there'll be, Reverend Hone will have more about that next week. Wednesday, December 7th, uh, we will be helping the Lutherans and Anglicans make sandwiches for the Advent lunch that day. So if you want to help, uh, it's at 9 a.m. at the Anglican Church 
And if you'd like to help, please contact Judy Krantz. So then the, the lunch will be at the Golden Age Center at 12 noon. December 11th, we're having a sing-along. And then December 13th is St. Paul's service at Caleb, if you want to come and, and help sing and visit. You can, that's at 10 a.m. Last year, Reverend Hohen, with help from the congregation, made a Jingle Bells video that was really popular. And this year, he's like to make a, a silent night video with different languages included. So tomorrow he is starting to uh, video the groups. And if you would like to be part of that, please let us know. Thank you to everybody who's already signed up. Please keep in your prayers Al and Gloria Jellico, their daughter Leslie and family on the death of Leslie's husband Tanner. Morris Taylor's family, Barry Howes and his family on the death of his daughter, Ellen Lloyd's family, Terry Shalito, Mary Blacklaws, Howard Saloff, Irene McRae, Darlene Wilson, Jenny Lee, Netha Parmentier, Cheryl Goodmanson, Winston Alice Newman, and those who are grieving the loss of family members or friends that have passed. We'll now light the Christ candle. The light of Christ shines through your voice and words, through our gestures and actions, and through the face that we present to the world. So let us light this candle to remind us that we can be the light of Christ for all. Got lots of lots of help laying the Christ candle today. <coughs> Creator calls us to live in peace as treaty people. As we gather on Treaty Six land, grateful for the people, the air, the water, the animals who have lived and continue to live here, we acknowledge that we worship in the traditional lands of Cree, Soto. Sloney, Nakoda, Dakota, and the homeland of the Métis, knowing that our journey toward truth and reconciliation requires intention, hope, and justice-seeking. And as we listen to the tone of the bell to center ourselves for worship, Please join Call to Worship. Call to Worship is a responsive reading. Beloved of God, we are called here today. Children of God, let us playfully worship together. Worshiping God who made each of us and loves all of us. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of tender mercy, we thank you. We live in difficult times. There are moments when your kingdom seems to be far away. Many of us face struggles in our lives and need what your kingdom promises. Yet in this time of prayer, you are close to us. Your presence touches us and invites us to have hope, hope grounded in the wonder of being loved by you. Amen. 
Please join to sing our opening hymn, Voices United, 644, I Was There to Hear Your Morning Cry. Please be seated. Let us pray prayer of confession together. God of all ages, we thank you for this day, for caring for us beautifully in this time. We praise your name for the gift of children in our lives and in our community. Forgive us for times when we discount their voices. Help us share your story with one another, that we may remember your love written on our hearts. Remind us to follow children as they lead us to living the kingdom way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please listen to the words of assurance. In the story of Genesis, when God created humankind, they were created in God's image. And indeed, God blessed them so they might grow and flourish along with creation. As children of God, we are blessed again and again with the love of God, and we are welcomed into the relationship with Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now uh, we are going to listen to choir anthem.
Maybe Hohen can cut that piece out <laughs> <laughs> with his talents. <laughs> the scripture reading today, the first one is from Deuteronomy 11, 18 to 21. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land of the Lord spoke to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. And the second scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5, and chapter 19, verses 13 to 15. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then? is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Then the little children and Jesus. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Enlighten us with your celestial fire. 
For if you're with us, then nothing else matters. And if you're not with us, then nothing else matters. Be with us, we pray in the name of your beloved. Amen. This Sunday is the final Sunday of the church calendar before the season of Advent begins a new church year. This wrap-up Sunday of the church year was originally known as Christ King Sunday. Uh, while some denominations still use the original name, the United Church of Canada has embraced more inclusive language and has chosen an alternative name, the Reign of Christ Sunday. Some Christians have issues with using the words such as king and kingdom. This is because language is the house of being, as a German philosopher Martin Heidegger once said. Language is the house of being, in its home human beings dwell. Those who think and those who create with words are the guardians of this home. So language matters. The words that we are using in our everyday life are very important because we dwell in our language. It is probably true that for many people, the word king, kingdom, and ruling suggests a system of royalty which many people cannot relate directly to their lives. Kings and kingdoms may sound like fairy tales. For others, those words may speak of a world of violence and oppression. Yet, as our denomination both honors the sensitivities of language and preserves the theme of God's sovereignty in our lives, we may also need to make room for Christ, uh, reign of Christ Sunday. Whether we use the word a king to describe Jesus or not, a long time ago, our Christian ancestors borrowed the language of kingship to help them speak of the new reality they experienced in Jesus, triumphant over oppression and death. And this belief of the early Christians was radically subversive. They were not afraid of other kings or any authorities, even the most powerful ruler, the emperor of Rome. They were loyal only to Jesus Christ. Their devotion was a real threat to Roman Empire because they belong to the reign of God of love, not the reign of the Roman Empire of terror. Where do we really belong? And what does it mean by the reign of Christ? I'd like to invite all of us to reflect on the subversive nature of the reign of God. In the reign of God, everything turns upside down. When Jesus was asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, Gage, <laughs> like age, <laughs> and, and, uh, and said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Jesus describes the reign of God in the gospel in, uh, in, the, 70, uh, in the 37 times. And not once is the kingdom of God like a kingdom of earth. 37 times Jesus reshapes the imaginations of his followers. 37 times Jesus tells them a story to help them remake the only world they know. The world of the disciple is one of the domination and violence. Their world is one which 
The wealthy and powerful rule over the weak, take advantage of that weakness, crush it under the boot, and lash it with the whip. It is a world in which Caesar is both king and god, a cruel, irrational tyrant who takes vengeance against his enemies. There have been benevolent kings over time, but down to this day, kingship is a word that signified inherited wealth and power, hierarchy, and the destruction of one's enemies. We can remember uh, the news a few years ago that the crown prince of Saudi Arabia ordered the gruesome murder of U.S. Mm -hmm. resident and Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi, a, a journalist who wrote critically of the royal family. The kingdom, unfortunately, is a corrupted metaphor one misused by the church throughout history to make itself into the image of the earthly kingdom. Indeed, Christians have often failed to recognize that kingdom was inadequate and incomplete way of speaking God's governance, not a call to set up their own empire. In this regard, Ada Maria Isashi Diaz, Latin American theologian, coins the term kingdom of God instead of kingdom of God. So you may often hear that I kind of intentionally use the term kingdom of God instead of kingdom of God. So kingdom offered a description of liberation that was self-determining with an interconnected community, seeing God's movement emerge from la familia, from the family of God. Isasi Diaz argues that kingdom, an image of la familia, the family of God, the liberating family of God working together for love and justice is a metaphor closer to what Jesus intended. I think kingdom is a good word and better reflects the kind of society Jesus envisions as a shared community of equals who serve each other. Jesus is our kin. Jesus is kin to me, you, all of us, making us one. This is a subversive deconstruction of the image of kingdom and kings replacing forever the pretensions and politics of the earthly kingdoms with Jesus calling forth a kingdom. Jesus is our kin. We are all the family of God. Kingdom of God means God's liberation at work among people, the good news for those who suffer at the hands of the kings. The liberation of God emerges from opening up space where love invites us to, into kin, kinship, invites us to join others at a table that grows. Liberation is found not in hope deeper to another world, to life another death, but what can be created now. On this church's New Year's Eve, we are invited to remember once again that God enters history as an impoverished baby born to an unwed mother. The WCC uh, stands for the World Council of Churches, which is a fellowship, kind of a, the biggest fellowship of, of many churches. And we, United Church of Canada, are part of the WCC. And from the 10th assembly of the WCC, the document, Putting Children at the Center, states, we affirm that children's dignity comes from their creation in God's own image. They are precious human beings with rights that needs to be guaranteed and protected by our families, our society, and our churches. When Jesus called a child that, and put that child in the center, he not only demonstrated extraordinary respect for children, but he upheld 
their inherit, inherited uh, human dignity and challenges his disciples to learn from them. Jesus touched children, blessing them with the love and grace of God. With blessing comes the sense that one is important and valued for who they are in that moment, not for who they might become. It is a reminder of the blessing we receive at baptism, that we are a beloved child of God and might continue to discover the gift of that identity. Children are the most vulnerable, and refugees are the ones who are always stuck at the end of the line in any country. We know that the Holy Family was a refuge. Jesus was a refuge child. In the kingdom of God, the last and the least one is the agent of God. If we want to welcome Jesus, we should welcome little children, the most vulnerable and the most powerless. It is not easy to understand the upside down logic of this kingdom of God. It may be still challenging for us to fully understand and accept the marvelous equ equation that Jesus taught. If we welcome a little kid in Jesus' name, it is equal to we welcome Jesus. Jesus makes it crystal clear about the inseparable relationship between God, Jesus, and children. On this church's New Year's Eve before Advent, let us ponder upon the upside-down kingdom of God with the meditative music of Margaret. I'd like to invite you to sing together more voices, this book, more voices, 161, 161, I have called you by your name. <coughs>
if you're able, please continue to stand <coughs> and let us glorify God now by offering our gifts and ourselves in grateful devotion to God. Please uh, sing together, Voices United 540, grant us God the grace as offering him. Let us pray. God of tender mercy, we pray these gifts of time, talent, and treasure that we offer to you will witness to the world that we are the family of God. We have faith in your love that we are invited into kinship and join others at the table that grows so that all of, us, all of your creation will share in your blessings. May these gifts we offer be a sign of our faith that your kingdom is here and now. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sorry. <laughs> Siblings, let us celebrate God's gifts of grace given to us in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit. We have one hope in Christ. Hear this record of Jesus' radical concern for welcoming children. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might bless them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Now, on, on behalf of the congregation of St. Paul's United Church, I present the following people for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Gage Weber, son of Dylan and Kim Weber. <laughs> yeah. Children can join. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I will ask uh, parents. In baptism, Gage marks an important step in uh, their journey of faith. Will you care for him and help him to take his place within the mission and witness of Christ Church? I will, God be my helper. Thank you. And God parents, please come forward. <laughs> so will you grow in faith with this child 
trusting that you are not alone. You live in God's will. I will help God be my helper. Okay. So let us pledge to these people our support and care. As a baptized and baptizing people, we commit ourselves to support and uphold you within the community of faith. May God grant us all the grace to live out our baptism. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us confess our faith uh, as in a, in a new creed. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. We, we live, live in God's, God's world. world. We, we believe, believe in God who has created and is creating, who has, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to, to proclaim, proclaim Jesus, Jesus crucified and risen, and risen our judge and our hope. In, in life, in death, in life, life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. As the water is poured, we recall Isaiah's promise. Waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And Jesus' words, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. May God's Spirit be upon us to baptize and to welcome. Listen to its free-flowing powers. Listen to its releasing powers. Listen to its welcoming powers. Gaze Weber, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. May the blessing of God of Sarah and Hagar, as of Abraham, the blessing of the Son, bone of the woman Mary, and the blessing of the Spirit who broods over us as a mother her children, be with you today and always. Amen. Gage, child of God, from this day forward, you bear the sign of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> so I would like to invite uh, families and friends or just congregation, come forward if you're able, <laughs> and, and uh, laying hands on uh, Gage and Gage's family and godparents. So please come forward if you are able. So it is a sign of connections. <laughs> So yeah, as a sign of connection, we touched uh, gays and gays parents or grand grand uh, godparents. So yeah, please come forward and just lay hands on me or something like that. I can connect it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, you, some people can sit, uh, stand over here. Yeah, as a sign of connection. Yeah, please touch me. Yeah, my hand. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So everybody is connected, laying hands on on backs or something like that. So. Yeah, just stay there, please, if you're able. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, okay. Yeah, connected to Daxton. Okay, I will say something. So, yeah. The Holy Spirit be upon you and within you gaze, child of God, disciple of Christ, member of the church. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, as a symbol, uh, we will give you this candle of uh, candle. <coughs> Gage, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to God. Amen. Amen. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> So let us pray. God of mercy and love, you welcome all who turn to you. You create a clean heart in those who repent and give your Holy Spirit to those who ask. Grant the grace that gaze may grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Equip gaze with the gifts of your Holy Spirit and fill him with faith in Jesus Christ and with love for all your people in service of your kingdom. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By, By one, one spirit, spirit, we are all baptized into one body. body. We, are we are children of the one God, God. Mother and, and Father of us all. We, we welcome you, you into the community, community of faith. faith. Amen. Uh, please give a big round of applause to the baptized and families. Please uh, be seated while we sing more voices, number 14, where two or three are gathered and prepare for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of this day, for the time together with all ages as part of the body of Christ in the world. Most of all, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, as he come to, came to be our guest and host at our tables. We pray for the faithful all over the world and all who love you may be united in your service. We pray for the church, 
for our witness and action together in and around Canada and with our global partners. May we support partners working with children. May we continue to love and serve as Jesus taught, calling those on the margins to gather together for God's blessing. O oh God, know our hearts and love us as we pray. We pray for the peoples and leaders of the nations that they may be reconciled one to another in pursuit of your justice and peace. We pray that our leaders, na national, provincial, and local, might serve with humility and grace, remembering the needs around them of all peoples and all ages. We pray for all who suffer from pre prejudice, greed, or violence, that the heart of your humanity may warm with your tenderness. We pray especially for the old prisoners of politics or religion and for all refugees. We pray for children of the world who face emotional, sexual, or physical violence. Help us challenge behaviors and attitudes that cause harm and help us become advocates for a world that values children. We pray for the land, the sea, and the sky that we may live with respect in creation and use your gifts with reverence. We pray that the generations beyond us will love and respect your blessings of creation. We pray for all who suffer the pain of sickness, loneliness, fear, or loss, that those whose names are in our hearts and the hearts of others or known, uh, or known to you alone may receive strength and courage. And in the silence of our hearts, we name those dear to us and those we meet yet do not know. And we gather all our prayers together into the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please join to sing our closing hymn, More Voices 214. More Voices 214. May God's sheltering wings. We will sing this hymn twice, uh, first with the words with her, she, her, and then uh, his and then his. Yeah.
Let us go into the world daring to let children lead, partnering with friends and neighbors as we seek God's justice and peace. May God, who loves us from our born in cry, go with us. May Jesus, who welcomes us into the relationship, stay with us. And may the Spirit's persistent call for peace be with us this day, this week, and always. Amen.